Hello folks, hope you're all doing well. I am up at the plot here on Sunday morning and I'm absolutely knackered. I've been down London for work last three or four days last week and I thought it was hot here in Scotland. Down there it was even hotter. It was awful. It was busy. It was hot. It was the peak of tourist season. There was people everywhere walking around on the underground. I am delighted to be back in my little piece of paradise but it has been hot up here as well it has been absolutely roasting but it is cloudy this morning and it's quite it's quite nice it's actually i wouldn't say it's cool but there's not that intense heat that there's been for the last few weeks and it's lovely out there and i think by about lunchtime today so i'm up here nice and early this is seven o'clock sunday morning nice and early before the sun comes out but apparently by about lunchtime-ish, we're due thunderstorms again here today. And by, is it needed? It's so close and claggy and horrible, and it just needs something to clear the air. But anyway, the, the thunderstorms and the sun and things like that, I mean, it, it, it's great for the plants and home inside here in the polytunnel, where it doesn't rain, but outside we'll have a look in a bit. It's looking very lush, very green. But it also brings with it all the weeds. So I think in the last in the last week, the weeds have gone whoosh. So we've got a few jobs to do today. I've got a couple of things to plan out. I've got the last of the onions. I've got a melon plant. I've got another cucumber that I'm going to try and squeeze in, in the corner over here. And we need to tidy up all the weeds. Because like I say, it's an absolute mess. Never leave them much longer. They'll get bigger. They'll go to seed. They'll spread. It'll get worse. And the problem becomes 10 times worse. So I'll get set up around about and we'll come back and we'll get some stuff on the go. So this is the bed I've got identified for the onions and you might recognise it from the last video. Was it the last video I did? One of the recent ones I did anyway. This is where I did a bit of a seed tape experiment and we had the radish, beetroot and spring onions and there was literally like it, nothing left. I mean it, it started off well, there was loads of radish little things came up there and then they all just disappeared. So my theory is that something came along and ate them, whether it was slugs, whether it was snails, whether it was whatever, but the seed tape itself, you see there's, there's little remnants of it that just quite haven't broken up yet, left in the soil. The seed tape itself seemed to seemed to germinate all right, but you know, alas, here we are with, with not a lot in it. So we've got the very last of the onions. Let me show you these. They are looking lovely. They are fasto onions and they probably, again, these probably should have been out a little while ago and let me let me pop the label over there so i don't don't lose the label we've got quite a few of them look at, look at this one as well i mean the size of it i mean it's they're a bit big for still being in pots i think uh at, at this time and there's there's nothing much to it this this compost is, is, is nice it's nice composty soil in here but even digging down it just shows you how dry it's been down here look how, how powdery that is there's no moisture in this whatsoever uh which isn't exactly ideal but like i say we've got we've got thunderstorms uh forecast for today and that's just some blood fish and bone that i'm putting in the hole there we've got thunderstorms forecast for later today and i'm hoping they're going to come and give us an absolute deluge of water with a bit of luck let me just show you the bottom of these onions there the roots aren't too bad i thought they were going to be pretty pretty ropey because uh, they'd been in those pots a bit longer than i'd wanted them to be but we'll pop them in there and hopefully i'll have to give this bed a good water and over i thought i thought i'd get away with it maybe today a little bit um and not have to water all these things in and whatnot but no it definitely is done because it's just dry very dry very very dry but we'll see we'll see how things work out we'll give it a, a few hours and we'll see if that deluge does come and if it doesn't come i can always as ever pop back up tomorrow or the day after and give everything another good soaking yet again right I'm going to crack on with the rest of these onions. I've got about, I don't know, about a dozen, 10, 12, something like that to put in this bed here. We'll get them sorted. We'll come back and we'll take a look at how things are looking. So that's the onions in. Let's just have a quick look at how we're looking. 
There we go, it turns out there was 10, so annoyingly, I've got one row of four and two rows of threes, but they're looking good, they're looking all right. They all need watering and they all need sorting. Couple of, couple of quick things to show you, just while we're passing. These are the iceberg lettuces, looking good. Look, you can see them just starting to, to form a bit of a heart of the lettuce in the middle there. Looking good, let me show you something else. The strawberries, can you see them there? There is millions of them. I keep picking them and picking them and picking them and still they keep coming. There's more and more and more. And what else do we have to see? The sweet peas have started to flower, which are lovely. I mean, they're not very tall. They haven't grown much, much up the frame yet, but I, was, I, th I think it was a little bit late putting them in, but they are looking lovely. And the nice thing about the sweet peas is some of last year's have self-seeded. So we've got some here and let's, let's have a wander along here. You know what I mean about the weeds, what I was talking about the weeds. Look at them. Look at them. Looking amongst the cauliflower. We'll have a proper look in amongst the cauliflowers in a minute. That's horrendous. And look, we've got some sweet peas growing up the fence here. And they've self-seeded themselves. Whether the birds have eaten the, the little seed things and then pooed them out and they've fallen here or they've somehow found their way here by the wind or what. I don't know. But I just think it was a nice thing to show you what was going on. Anyway, what else do we need to do today? We need to sort out the melon in the polytunnel. We need to sort out the cucumber in the polytunnel. The weeds, right? Now, I like to split my weeds into a couple of different categories, right? And let's, and let's, let's just have a look at some of them. So, first one, ones that grow in the no-dig bed. This is a sort of willow herb sort of one. Dead easy to remove. Not a bother, just pull it, out it comes. There's loads of it, but it's dead easy to deal with. Ones that grow my paths. Weeds that grow my paths are one of the most annoying things that, that, that there is because I like nice neat paths and look look what's happened here look at look up this path here look at this look at the mess and this has been bubbling away for a couple of weeks so they've only been tiny little weeds but I think in the last the last week in particular they've just gone whoosh and up they've come and they are awful to deal with I hate dealing with the weeds in the path but they need dealt with because they look pretty bad and this in the cauliflower bed now I'm not even sure what type of weed that is. We'll have a closer look. We'll take the cover off and I'll have a closer look in a minute when we get set up. But the collies are doing brilliant. You can see they're coming along lovely, but look at this weed in amongst it. And this is a normal bed. It's a bed that I dig. And it's, I, I, I don't know where it's all come from. It's been covered all winter, so the seed must have gotten there somehow. Now this part of the collie bed was only uncovered just the other week there. So it's a, it's a, good, it's a good few weeks to a couple of months behind this one. And you can see already in amongst the little collie plants, all the little weed seeds starting to germinate and come up. And the, the problem I've got at the moment is normally in a situation like that, especially with the little ones, I would just hoe the bed. Now I hoe it, but because everything's so dry and I have a limited time up here, I've then got to come and water everything. So all the little roots that come up, then just bed themselves back into the soil and start growing again, which is infinitely annoying. So today, it's going to be a bit of manual labour and I'm going to start digging out loads of those weeds. The ones in the path, they just get pulled up, chucked in the bucket and chucked away. The ones in the beds, the beds sort of need, you know, I'm going to get the little trowel out and we're going to give them a little bit of, maybe it's a hoary hoary knife, depends how deep they are, depends what type of weeds they are. But we'll get them sorted back. So I've decided, I'm, <laughs> I'm absolutely knackered honestly. I've, I've just been stood, pottering about in the polytunnel for about the last half an hour, wondering quite quite what I'm going to do around here and the only thing I've managed to achieve is string up two cucumbers so there's one over there that you can't see that is massive that was starting to pull the cane over that's toppled on I'll show you that in a minute and I've got one behind me here that wasn't strung up properly I've just done that now up to the top of the polytunnel now but I, I think I've decided that I need to stop faffing about <laughs> faffing about with YouTube stuff and filming and stuff like that and crack on with the weeds later on by myself, so I'm not doing anything about the weeds today. I, I'm just too tired to be faffing about, but we've got plants, we've got plants to put out. And these these are the last of, of, of what's been inside and they've probably got a little bit too big. So I've got, I wasn't even, you know, I wasn't even planning on putting this cucumber out, but let me see if I can get it out of the pot. 
So it's grown, it's, see the melon's now attached to the cucumber. So you can see it's, it's already huge. It's pretty much gonna be the height. It's gonna be like six foot long that, but it's already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, at least 11 cucumbers on it already grown. So when I saw it, I couldn't face sending this to the big compost bin in the sky or giving it away because it's healthy, it's big, it's grown and it's got loads of fruit on it. So I'm going to find a space over here. So this is, this is one of the things I was doing. I was just sort of dwelling about in here, wondering what to do, where to put it. I had originally thought back here, but the tomatoes, when they pick up, when they really get going, are going to get too jungly over here, I think. Whereas the peppers over here will get big, they'll get bushy, but nowhere near as bad as this side. So I'm going to put the cucumber in a space here, and I'm going to put the melon in a space back there. I'm going to bring the melon and trail it all the way along the front edge, edge of this bed. So when I'm doing that, I'll bring the camera off further go over, so you can sort of see what I'm doing a bit closer, and hopefully... We'll get some melons this year, but we'll we'll see. I've, I've got them. I've, I don't want to pick the melon plant up. Honestly, it's, it's all tangled up in here. First jobs first. I'll get these untangled. We'll get set up over here, and then I'll come back. Right. So we're sort of squished in at the top of the poly somewhere here, and ho hopefully you can see what's going on. So there's a, it's a little bit of a squeeze here between one, two, three of these peppers, but I think it's the right place. Because let me show you the let me show you the melon here. Let me show you look. Nice, big, long melon plant again. That's probably four or five foot long already. But what I'm going to do, and I'll, again, I'll, I'll show you right at the end there, just because it might not make so much sense from, from here. So I'm going to bring it from here. The melon's going to trail out this way in between these two chilli plants here. And then I'm going to bring it all the way along the front of this bed and trail it along there. And hopefully, because it's a the variety of melon that it is as well, is Minnesota Midget. And I did... I think I've mentioned before, I picked up a melon plant last year at a plant swap and I just sort of left it to do its thing. And then I, when I was, I think when I was clearing out the polytunnel towards the end of the year, I found two tiny little melons on it. Um, and it wasn't ideal because obviously I had then, and I'm just, Sorry, I'm just having a look at that. I don't think that needs to be quite as deep as some of these other ones. So the leaves and the flowers are right at the bottom of this, right at the where the sort of stems joining the compost. So what I'm gonna do is a little bit different. Sorry, I'm I'm digressing and going all over the place here. Let me grab the compost. So as I was saying, yeah, I found two tiny little melons attached to the plant right at the end of the season and in the way i'd done it they were sort of hidden away from my view which wasn't ideal which is one of the reasons why with this one oh look at the roots on that they're lovely i want to uh, trail it all the way along the front of this bed here so i can sort of keep an eye on what's going on with it <laughs> you can this is how bothered I can be with things today. Say I'm a bit hot and bothered and tired and things. Tra traveling, people think it's great when you, you travel away from work and it, it's quite nice when I'm away and I'm with my pals from work and I, I, I don't go away loads, but you know, every now and again. And it is nice because we, we get on well at work with the, with the people I work with and it's nice you go away and you go out for a meal on a night time and you have a few beers and you're somewhere different and, you know, you go different places, but the traveling, the, the train on the way down was delayed over two hours, 138 minutes to be precise, as they told us on the train. We were delayed for over two hours on the way down, and it was just, oh, the trains in both directions were heaving, it was really busy, it was just, the traveling's just, uh, I don't know, I can't be bothered with the traveling. The being there is nice, but the traveling's a pain. But anyway, that's the melon in, and hopefully where I've put it there as well. It's accessible in terms of watering because these these are going to get bushier they're going to get bigger this is going to get bigger but hopefully i'll get in here watering no bother still access and then trailing this all the way down the front but the next conundrum we've got is that cucumber which is going to get bigger than this but i've got an idea about putting it over there so we'll switch this around we'll come over there and we'll get the cucumber in 
cucumber and melon sorted. Let me just show you another couple of things just faster here. This ginormo cucumber here when I came in is on this cane and it was leaning right forward. It was leaning sort of all the way over here. So what I've had to do is obviously the weight of the plant is getting pretty big. I've just got a little bit of string in here that just takes it up to the ridge bar there on the polytunnel and that's going to keep that nice and safe. Job done. Right, let's have a look over here. So here is the melon all the way back at the polytunnel here. So you can see it's in this little gap here and it's trailing all the way along here. Now these melons, you can grow them vertically or you can trail them along the ground at the moment. So you can see, like I've got here, there's loads of little flowers on it, but because it's been inside under the grow light, it's not been pollinated. And say the Minnesota midget. So when you get some pollinators in here, get this on the go and I'm gonna trail it all the way along here. So there's a little gap that's just about the perfect size for getting this all the way along here. And the cucumber, we've got on the go here so you can see where I've put the pot in there. Now I did change my mind a couple of times. I did think about putting it back there, but then I thought I might have difficulty with harvesting and things like that because the cucumbers are going to be ready a lot earlier than the peppers. So I thought, let's pop it here. We can harvest the cucumbers. I can keep this plant under control. I'll not let it get too big, too wide. You know, I'll snip little bits off it here and there just to keep it under control so it's not invading the space of the peppers that are around and about it. And you can see all these tiny little cucumbers all the way up there on it. And it's tied in right to the very top there. So there we go. Job done, I think. That's me done for today. I'm gonna to get some breakfast, you know. I've been here for I don't know how long, pottering about doing jobs. Probably half the reason why I'm tired. I've had nothing to eat, nothing to drink yet. So I've got a cup of coffee in the car and some food. I'm gonna have something to eat. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna get some tidying up done. I'm gonna battle some of those weeds. And then that's me done for today. But anyway, thank you very much for watching folks. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.